Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 221, Exploratory Discussions The life of Empress Jing Xian was truly legendary. From a pampered young lady to an empress, experiencing the departing hearts between husband and wife, being framed and separation from one's child. At the end she even gave a tooth for a tooth and a knife for a die, and cleaned up the entire inner palace of Great Liang so thoroughly, which made one delighted. She was the kind of person that would be unwilling to fall in the face of adversity and if there were any regrets, it would be the first that Zi Kai's poison could not be cured and the second, she was unable to have a reunion with Zi Yuan. Both brothers, Zi Kai and Zi Yuan were also more like Empress Zhao. Empress Zhao was originally a great beauty that everyone sought for and it was not over to say that she was absolutely beautiful. Not only did Zi Kai and Zi Yuan inherited Empress Zhao's beauty, they also inherited her means and methods. As Zi Jing was in the imperial family, there were still some shadow of Emperor Zhao Wu, like when engaging with politics and balancing the powers at both ends, he could not help but allied the power of marriage. However Zi Yuan was different. He was far away in Ming Qi and was on opposing side with the imperial family of Ming Qi. There were no traces of Zi Yilong's shadow and he did accomplish the expectations that Empress Zhao had of him. Even though he was not considered a good person, he was definitely not a despicable person. Xin Miao had not expected that Xi Jingxing's life experiences would have so much twists and bizarre turns and she could not help but admire Empress Zhao Xian. Empress Zhao Xian resembled her previous life but at the end became this empire's winner. However Xin Miao was unable to do it like Empress Zhao. To have the determination to cut one's loss quickly and able to withstand the pain of separation of one's flesh and blood. Seeing her complicated expression, Zi Jingxing instead felt funny, there is no need to pity me. I have never seen her before and naturally do not have any attachment to her. She was a young man that grew up alone in storms, with a birth father chasing to kill and had never seen one's birth mother before. Instead he had an even more open mind to things and many things would just amount to a smile from his perspective. However it was because one did not have any expectation of others thus one did not care about another's feelings. Xin Miao was silent for a moment before speaking. I will accompany you to walk to the end. Zi Jing Xing's eyes slightly moved but he continued to smile and teased. Since you sympathize with me, why not compensate it to me? His devilish smile swept the sentimental atmosphere away. Xin Miao glared at him and suddenly thought about something and said, but in this case, his majesty's illness. She did not continue speaking. Since the Jiao family had asserted that Zi Kai could not live past 35, then how long could Emperor Yongle live? Imperial older brother has already passed his 36th birthday this year. Zi Jingxing said, it can been seen that sometimes assertions are not accurate. However, his eyes got cold, imperial older brother's health is getting worse. Does the Lu family and Yi family know of this matter? Xin Miao asked. One heard that after Emperor Zhaoyi passed on, my imperial mother had already wiped out everyone who knew of the matter in the palace. Currently the people who knew of imperial older brother's illness, other than the head of the Jiao family, you, me and Imperial Sao, there should not be anyone else living. Shen Miao's heart jumped as she thought about Empress Jing Xian's swift and forceful methods that helped to resolve many future worries. Then did her ladyship the Empress knew of the Emperor's illness before she married him? Or was it after marrying the Emperor? Shen Miao asked. Zi Jing Xing looked at her with a smile but not a smile. What do you want to ask? Xin Miao thought that if Empress Xianda knew that Emperor Yongle would not live past 35, would she marry to Emperor Yongle? After all it was not an easy task to be widowed at such a young age. If she knew of it after marriage, then wouldn't be deceiving her entire lifetime. If it was you, how would you choose? Zi Jingxing asked. Xin Miao said, when I married to you, I have not like you to the stated that I am willing to be widowed. After saying those words she had a look of annoyance, thinking if this was considered cursing Zi Jingxing or not. However Zi Jingxing was very satisfied hearing those words and pulled her over before placing Shen Miao's head in his embrace and said in all smiles, 
Oh, does it mean that now you like me to a state that you are willing to be widowed? Not waiting for Shen Miao to reply, he thoughtfully said, as such when you married to me you actually liked me, who liked you. Shen Miao was suffocated by him pressing her into his embrace and spoke in anger. However she heard Xi Jingxing's leisurely voice, just say that you like me. I am one who has tender and protective feelings for the fairer gender and would not bear to let you be widowed so young. Shen Miao did not get angry and instead laughed and retorted, being widowed, rest assured. Currently there are not many females alive that would stay widowed obediently. There are lots of rumors between women and places of pleasure can be found everywhere in Long Yi. She no longer carried herself like the past in front of Xi Jingxing and would occasionally make Xi Jingxing frustrated to dead. Sure enough, Xi Jingxing paused upon hearing those words and stared at her carefully before gently speaking, want to look for places of pleasure? His tone was warm but Shen Miao felt that her back of her neck was inexplicable chilly. Not waiting for her to speak, Xi Jingxing suddenly stood up and carried her before striding towards the bed. Scaring Shen Miao so much that she shrieked but Zi Jingxing still said, You reminded me to work hard so this husband would naturally not dare to be lazy. Tai Yi, who was guarding outside, was unexpectedly caught off guard by this couple's action that his old face became red. He could not leave or stay and it was extremely funny to see his tanned face become red. After the couple gasped for breath and fussed around, they finally stopped. Shen Mia lay on Zi Jingxing's arms and asked him, You have not answered my question previously. Does her ladyship the Empress know of the matter or not? Imperial Sao is such an intelligent female, if she was deceived and married in, the matter would be big. Zi Jingxing sighed. At the beginning when Imperial Mother was selecting a wife, she had once called Imperial Sao into the palace to talk. One need not need to think. Imperial Mother hated people who used others' sincere hearts in her entire life. Even it was to balance the political forces, she would still be conscientious to the other party. Shen Miao said, to marry even upon knowledge, her ladyship the Empress sincerely like the Emperor. Zi Jingxing did not speak. Empress Zhanda's maiden family was a family of literature and history. When talking about real power, it was much lacking when comparing to other aristocratic families but at the end Empress Dowager Jing Zhan chose Empress Zhanda for Emperor Yang Lu because Empress Zhanda's maiden family, the residence of Zhang historian, was absolutely loyal. Moreover Empress Zhanda was like her title, gentle, honest, sincere, intelligent and magnanimous. Empress Dowager Jing Zhan and Emperor Zhao Wu were different. Emperor Yang Li could promote his other consort to balance the political powers but there was only one wife and this was the partner that one would be spending one's life with. One's character was important as she should be able to share the fortune and misfortune with the other and was considered a daughter of a noble house and able to withstand storms and resist the splendor. Empress Zhanda's family was loyal and one would not know if Empress Zhanda truly had feelings for Emperor Yongla. After all, it was a luxury to talk about sincere feelings in an imperial family. However Empress Zhanda had always been calm even knowing that Emperor Yongla was unable to live past 35. Shen Miao said, if it is just for power, she should plan for herself. Zi Jingxing smiled. Imperial Sao is very smart but not greedy. It would be the best if one was not greedy. Many roots of tragedies could not escape from the word greed. Greed for power, greed for wealth or greed for feelings. Shen Miao thought for a moment and said, Now that consort Jing is pregnant, how do you all plan to deal with the Lu family? Zi Jingxing was playing with Shen Miao's long hair and said carelessly, what does Lu Jing's pregnancy got to do with us? Water that can float a boat can also swallow it. The Lu family thought that by using the dragon seed, they could rest without worries but they have thought incorrectly. Some opponents would definitely turn around when a monarch has a dragon seed and how many in Lu family army would bend with the wind. They can be biased towards the Lu family but could also be biased towards the imperial family. Shen Miao looked at him it could not be just that right? Zi Jingxing raised his brows, what do you think? After preparing for this long, it is obvious that consort Jing's pregnancy is an accident and you did not expect this at all. Shen Miao said, if consort Jing is not pregnant, 
How do you plan to deal with the Lu family? Easy. Zi Jingxing said, Imperial older brother had been scheming against the Lu and Yi family since enthronement and had been searching for evidence on the Lu family using the army privately. Now most of the evidence are collected and it is time for it to be brought out to the open. At that time, all the mouths under heavens would be sealed and that is the first thing. The second thing is, Zi Jingxing said, even though the Lu family has large military power in Great Liang, it is not like there are no other generals. Those generals have mostly become Imperial Older Brothers people and there is still the Mo Yun army that is accumulating power. Now matters have become much easier. Once the evidence are brought up to light, either the Lu family confess but Lu Zheng Yi had been arrogant for an entire lifetime and would definitely not admit to the crimes and instead turn against the Imperial family. Then one can round up the gang and eliminate in one stroke. When Shen Miao heard him speak, she thought that Xi Jingxing and Emperor Yang Le were indeed brothers as they really deal with people to a state that there was no way to turn it around. It was very simple and crude but very effective. Was this perhaps inheriting some characteristics of Empress Zhao? She said, if this is the case, why is there the need to prepare for so many years? It can be completed at the beginning. By resolving this early on, it would save a lot of time. Xi Jingxing leaned towards her years. Little girl, you have to know that we the Z family's men do not like wading in mud and water and also do not like evenly matched adversaries. If one were to take action, one will do it to the level that everything is uprooted. The Lu family's roots are too deep and it if was done earlier, it would be harder to clean up. Now that the time is ripe, isn't it better to clean everything all up? Xin Miao frowned and she heard Xi Jingxing speaking again. I know that you like to gamble. At the beginning when you have little powers, you dared to scheme against Prince Yu but it was too dangerous. The damage can be too great and I do not like it. He said, sacrificing too much is also a defeat. Xin Miao had to admit that Xi Jingxing's words made sense. At the beginning, she dared to go against Prince Yu and Fu Zayu Yi because she was fighting alone. By using a stone to hit Jade. The Jade would always be more injured but afterwards when the Shen family got implicated, she have too much considerations and could not be as bold as before. Moreover this was even so with Zi Jingxing. If it was an evenly matched opponent, the more it was dragged on, the one suffering would be the commoner of Great Liang. If one had enough strength like now and, it would be easier to clean everything up and one could also minimize the amount of sacrifices. But the Lu family is like this. How about the Yi family? Xin Miao still had doubts and was hesitating to talk about it but finally spoke. Previously Imperial older brother planned to pull the Yi family since the Yi family had no descendant and just a crippled young master that could not make any waves. Zi Jingxing said, but since you have told me your dream, Yi Mai and sibling are enemies. How could one draw enemies over? This is self-destruction. He then said, rest assured, I will avenge for you. Xin Miao was silent for a long time before speaking softly, thanks. For another party to change a plan that was started way early was not something that could be said that easily. Not mentioning how troublesome it is to replan everything that was related to it, when one scheme, the most fearful thing was variables but Xi Jingxing was willing to take care of all possible outcomes in the future. How fortunate was one to encounter such a person. Xi Jingxing saw that her expression was different so he lifted her chin and looked carefully, oh? He then continued, so move to such a state? Why not repay me with yourself? Shen Miao pushed him and scolded. What nonsense are you spouting? How do you plan to deal with the Yi family? Zi Jingxing thought for a moment, this is not difficult. Since the Yi family is not our imperial family's people, then naturally they are with the Lu family. Once one is able to find evidence of the two families' private exchanges, the Yi family would fall into misfortune if anything happens to the Lu family. Aren't you usually smart? How could you not even know how to frame now? Xin Miao looked at him stunned. Zi Jingxing could actually speak of framing others a serious crime in such an upright and frank way. Those who did not know would think that he was doing something that was aspiring big matter. Moreover it was not such a simple matter to frame a prime minister of a country, the Yi family. It is actually better to deal 
deal with the Yi family than the Lu family. The Yi family have nothing more than a complicated power dynamics in the circle of the civil officials but once something happens to the Lu family and the Yi family gets implicated, those civil officials would make clean up their relationship with the Yi family since they are not fools. For so many years, the two confidants that Emperor Zhao Wu left behind had lost much strength and glory than before. Xin Miao thought about it and said, it is not that their strength has been worn out but your strength has grown to a point that it is no longer restrained by them. The cubs had finally grown up to be the king of beasts thus all those clowns that were jumping around in the mountains and forest should now be individually cleaned up. Zi Jingxing looked at her and teased, you respect me so much? Xin Miao said expressionless, respect those that can be respected. Since Furin is so supportive then one has to serve Furin well. Zi Jingxing said solemnly before flipping over and pressing Shen Miao under him. Shen Miao was unable to speak. Meanwhile, in the Yi residence, Yi Mai and Yi were chatting in the room. Yi Mao Kai was a self-proclaimed scholar, thus the furnishing of the room was naturally elegant. In every turn, there would be paintings, books and orchids around but upon careful inspection, all the books and painting were famous masterpieces and the orchids were all of highest grades. Even the paperweight on the table was also valuable. It could be seen that the wealth of the Yi family was not false. It was true that they were scholars but it would not be true that all scholars were poor. There were delicate snacks on the table. Yi Mai was wearing a embroidered lotus robes that had an inner crystal yellow top. Be it the material or the workmanship of the clothes. They were both of top-notched. She had been born with an outstanding look so when she wore as such, she looked more noble than those noble ladies in the palace. With a natural romantic bearing, she was very charming and seductive. Yeek sat across from her. His clothes were also as simple as before but there was another layer of fabric. It was obvious that the Yi family treated the siblings quite well. Older sister, what did you mean with those words? Yi cast with a frown. Yi Mai picked the teacup up from the table and took a sip before speaking faintly. Previously Yi Furin was searching for females and insisted that I was her daughter. This entire thing was confusing and messy that one did not know if it was real or not. However it is a good place for us to go. After father and mother died, one is no longer able to look after the store and being a young lady of an official family is much better than being a daughter of a merchant. It is also the same for you. With Prime Minister Yi as a father, your official career would be much smoother. Yi smiled bitterly. I naturally know of this truth but doesn't Yi Mao Kai not believe our identities? In the past, Yi Mai and Yi would not believe that there were free things that fell from the skies but after person from Yi family came to search for relatives came, both siblings could only believe that there were such good things in the world. One heard that a few decades ago, Yi Furin was harmed by veiled characters and her daughter was stranded outside. Finally when searching for relatives, they had found Yi Mai. As for whether it was true or not, from Yi Mai's perspective, this was definitely not real, because Yik and her were siblings that were born together. However people would always be prejudiced, for example that Yi Furen, who looked very normal, was insistent that Yi Mai was her daughter and no matter how others persuaded her, she did not listen and insisted on bringing Yik to the Yi residence due to Yi Mai's relation. Yi Mai and younger brother were vigilant and had high defenses but afterwards Yi Mao Kai came to see them, compared to Yi Furen. Yi Mao Kai was much more sober and spoke frankly that Yi Mai and younger brother was not Yi Furen's children. However because of Yi Furen's insistence, Yi Mao Kai did not want to obstruct and because of Yi Furen's health, he was willing to conceal this lie and give both of them the identity of the Yi family's children. Yi Furen was an exceptionally astute person so she would not jump into the fire easily without knowing the pros and cons about the matter. She thought of ways to inquire about the Yi family's situation and learned about the current delicate position of the Yi family and imperial family. In addition, the Yi family had a unhealthy young master and was considered to have no qualified successors to carry on one's undertaking. Thus Yi Mao Kai needed a pair of siblings to block the mouths of the world, mutually benefiting from each other and with each taking what one needed plus a handicapped person would not be able to create any storm. Won't the wealth of this Yi residence end up in Yik's hands? Moreover with the name of the Yi family, 
it would be a smooth matter for ye might to marry into noble families without a care for jaded food and brocade clothes. Even if ye Maokai had other ideas, both siblings were not fools and could to think of ways to get what they wanted. Thus ye my and younger brother entered the ye residence and became the young lady and young master of the ye family. Ye Furin trusted them and ye Maokai guarded against them but this was no different for ye my and younger brother. The ye family was just a springboard and a backing that could help them move faster in the future. Ye my said, it is not important if one trusts the identities or not. You and I are from a merchant family so just treat him as a businessman. It is just that this business looked like a loss. I had not thought that it would become like this. Like this? Yeek did not understand, older sister, do speak clearer. Ye Mai said, previously I had thought that the Yi family was strong in Long Yi and one did not need to worry about anything. Even though there is a delicate relationship with the imperial family one could still balance it off. However in recent days, one felt that something is off. The Yi family is not as good as I have thought and seem to be in a precarious position. One step forward would be living with a peace of mind but if the step was taken wrongly, it would be an abyss that one would suffer a double loss. When Yi heard of it, his expression became a bit unsightly. You are saying that the Yi family's situation is dangerous now. I do not know if it is dangerous. Yi Mai smiled coldly, Yi Mao Kei, that old fox, concealed it very tightly and is unwilling to let us know about the Yi family's predicament. Even though Yi Furin trusts me, she trusts Yi Mao Kai more so it is even more difficult to gain information from her than mounting to heavens. However the more it is so, the more one's intuition is uneasy. One always felt that this Yi residence is not good. Perhaps you have thought too much. Yeek thought about it and shook his head, the Yi family is after all the Prime Minister of Great Liang so how could it be like what you have said? As for the Yi family to be wary of us, it is most likely because of the short time period. After all, we are all on the same boat and at the beginning didn't you suggest to get people to assassinate Rui Wang Pei? Else the Yi family would not have agreed with it. It was a pity that Rui Wang Pei is fortunate and was actually saved by that scholar and avoided that calamity. Yi Mai's eyes hang down and she suddenly laughed. She really have a good fortune and is really lucky. But older sister, Yi looked at her. At that time why did you want the Yi family to kill Rui Wang Pei? Is it truly because to enter the residence of Prince Rui? I felt that this decision was rash and there were much to consider. Yi Mai paused a little and thought for a while before speaking. If I tell you that when I first saw her, I did not want that to live in this world, would you believe it? Yi was startled but Yi Mai had fallen into her own deep thoughts. When she reached Long Yi with the Yi family. It was just when Zi Yuan returned from the imperial hunt. Yi Mao Kai gave her the antidote and wanted her to put up an act of lending a helping hand upon seeing the reward list. Naturally for the Yi family to be able to have the antidote, one feared that they were involved in how Prince Rui was injured. If Yi Mai used the identity of the Yi family to help, one would inevitably suspect the Yi family. It was better and logical to say that one was looking for relatives and subsequently the Yi family discovered them. Yi Mai Kai wanted to use Yi Mai to be related to the residence of Prince Rui, with Yi Mai's beauty and in addition that she was Zi Yuan's benefactor. The longer she stayed in the residence of Prince Rui, the more natural things could happen. Yi Mai saw Prince Rui, Zi Yuan, at that time, towards men. Love was not worth mentioning to Yi Mai. She was one with ambitions and means and males were just tools to achieve her goals. If there was a better and more outstanding, she would just change to another one. To her, it was like a beauty has to be matched with gorgeous clothes, precious jewelry and wealthy house so naturally one would want a noble husband. Zi Yuan was the best one she had seen from when she grew up. He had great powers even though he was young and he had a beautiful appearance. Even just laying down quietly, he was filled with a nobility air and caught others' eyes. What was more was that Yi Mai heard from Yik that Zi Yuan was one who was powerful and had means. It was normal for her to want such a great person like that and Zi Yuan's coldness made her want to conquer him. One had heard that Zi Yuan had a consort but Yi Mai had not seen her before. She came to know that the female was a daughter of a Ming Chi's general and disapproved of it. A daughter of a general was rude and rough and she only came alone from 
from afar, without any backing, so Yi Mai did not even think that the other party had the qualification to be her opponent. It was until the moment she saw Shen Miao. There was even some dirt on Shen Miao's clothes. Her hair was not very neat and she had a travel-worn expression but when she stood in front of Yi Mai, she had a dignified and majestic manner as if one was a ruling and overbearing beast and declared one's sovereignty. It was clearly Yi Mai that was the most glamorous and Shen Miao was in a sorry state. But at that moment, Yi Mai had a ridiculous feeling. It was as if even she exhausted all her energy and strength. She was not be able to snatch any single strand of thing from this female's hands. In the days that followed, Shen Miao was quite cold to her and occasionally Yi Mai could feel the light disgust and hate from her. Since ancient times, females' feelings would oppose. Not only did Shen Miao felt uncomfortable with her, Yi Mai also felt uncomfortable with Shen Miao. Hearing that Shen Miao has the doting love from parents, care from her eldest brother, good friends and sisters and even have the love from Zi Yuan. Even though there was a cold war, the onlooker saw everything clearly. If there was no feelings and love then why was there a need for a cold war? It was obvious that one loved her to the bones that every move would implicate one's own emotions. The more one compared, the more Yi Mai could not be reconciled. For what reason does all the good things in the world be enjoyed by Shen Miao only? She does not know how to act coquettishly so for what reason could she gain Zi Yuan's favor? The most irreconcilable thing was that someone inferior living better than her. Yi Mai was jealous and felt disgusted. She loved to snatch others things and make them belong to hers. But Shen Miao's things looked too difficult to be snatched. Then what could be done? Make Shen Miao Miao disappear. Therefore Yi Mai told Yi Mao Kai that only with Shen Miao death, there would be an empty consort position for Prince Ruai and she would have the capability to grasp Zi Yuan's heart. Instead of saying that Yi Mai wanted to snatch Zi Yuan away, it was better to say that Yi Mai just did not want to see Shen Miao living better than her. Yi Mai did not want to lose to Shen Miao. Yi Mao Kai already had thought of getting Yi Mai to climb up to the residence of Prince Ruai so he agreed to it finally. But no one had expected that Shen Miao did not die and there was even someone who was willing to protect Shen Miao with their lives. And because of the rash action from the Yi family, Zhu Yuo seemed to have some suspicion and watched the Yi family very tightly. Yi Mao Kai was angered by Yi Mai because of this matter. In Yi Mai's life, she had never failed in getting what she wanted before. She would make use of everything and everyone, until everything was smooth and she was able to snatch the other person thing over, no matter if it was a thing or a person or one's heart. However, she had run up against a snag with Shen Miao. She was unable to snatch Shen Miao's man, unable to take Shen Miao's life and could not rob Shen Miao's fortune away. 